Hey, what's going on, lovely humans of the internet? Welcome back to yet another video. So today we're taking a look at the Metabone Speed Booster for the EOS R and RP. So what this product is designed to do is to remove or reduce the crop in the EOS R and RP. So the crop factor on an EOS R is 1.75 and what this is going to reduce it to is 1.24. For the EOS RP, it's 1.63 down to 1.15. So as you can see, that is quite a significant cut down. And on top of that, the way this adapter has been designed is it angles the light towards the sensor. So you actually get an extra one stop of more light. So this is a third party company. It's not created by Canon, which I'll get into in a little bit. Canon did make their own adapter. So this adapter is designed for EF lenses to be fit onto an RF body. I only use two lenses and I've only tested it on two lenses. First is the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter. And after putting this lens on the adapter, everything works flawlessly. I'm able to shoot in 4K and the lens has an aperture of F2.8, but what the adapter was able to do is to bring it down to F2. Not a full stop, but about a 0.8. Okay. So I'm currently shooting in 1080p with the full sensor. Now I'm not using the speed booster right now. I'm using the original Canon adapter and this is 60 millimeters at full HD. And if I zoom out to 11, oh, oh my goodness. You can see all that vignetting because this is an APS-C lens. Now switching to 4K, this is 11 millimeters and this is still with the standard adapter with the 1.75 crop, which is more equivalent to like a 17, 18 millimeters. So it's still definitely usable as you can see but my arm is fully extended and it's quite uncomfortable because usually I hold the camera about this close and if I zoom all the way to 16 millimeters at 4K, so it does give you a good amount of zoom as you can see, but when I zoom all the way out for 4K vlogging, it's a little bit too close for my comfort. Now we are on the speed booster at full HD 1080p and as you can see, we have a lot of vignetting. I'm currently at 16 millimeters. This is all the way zoomed in my lens can go and I'm also able to shoot an F2 now instead of F2.8, so I definitely get more of that light. We have more blurry background because of that increased depth and then if I zoom all the way out to 11, millimeters oh my gosh look at that you can even see the microphone in the shot so as you can see this is clearly not designed to work in 1080p you're supposed to shoot in 4k with the crop so let's switch over to 4k now we're in 4k shooting at 11 millimeters and as you can see we have a much wider shot now we do have a little bit of vignetting on the sides um it's because my lens is extremely wide and also because it is a design for APS-C and if I zoom in it doesn't zoom in quite as much as it used to because we are you know shooting a little bit wider now with the speed booster but the 1.24 crop is much more usable compared to the 1.75. And this Tokina lens is a third party lens. So a third party lens with a third party adapter on a Canon body, it seems to work pretty well. But the weird part is when I put a native 50 millimeter 1.8 from Canon onto the adapter, I ran into some issues. First, I noticed there are some connection issues. Now this could be, you know, maybe my lens is defective. I don't know, but every now and then the aperture controls just disappear. So what I have to do is take out the lens, put it back on for it to re-register. And in terms of the aperture, I was able to go from F1.8 down to F1.2. So yet again, not a full stop of light, but about a 0.6 this time. So as you can see, it doesn't work exactly how it's advertised to work. Now Canon did also release their own version of a speed booster, but at the time of this video, it's not actually actually released to the public. It's on pre-order and it costs $600 compared to the Metabones, which retails at $479. And I don't really know exactly how well the Canon version will perform. I can only assume that with its own native lenses like Canon glass, Canon adapter, and then Canon body, it should work a little more flawlessly. You know, it's the same exact sort of specs, you know, 0.71, you know, crop reduce, as well as an extra stop of light increase. But here's the thing, for the extra price, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it because you're getting the same sort of features as the Metabones version. On top of that, the Metabones version comes with this little control wheel where you can set, you know, custom controls like ISO. The Canon version doesn't have any of those extra, you know, knickknacks and stuff. So for the Metabones adapter, you are getting more bang for your buck. The only concern about the Metabones version is there might be some compatibility issues. Now, I don't know if this could be fixed with software. If you guys want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description below, as well as the Canon version if you are interested in checking that one out. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button, drop your comments below. If you want to see more content from me, hit that subscribe button, as well as turning on those post notifications. And just like that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.